Hello everyone, Kevin Sexton here with Sexton Creation and this is uh, episode 6, Art with Fire. And what I'm going to do with this episode is talk about uh, how I got into art and my, my also my philosophy with art. Because there's a lot of misconceptions on what you should do as an artist, what you shouldn't do, how you should do it, how you shouldn't do it. And many other things, and I, and I just like to give, you know, I have a very straightforward, you know, forward point of view of how to do art. And I just want to, you know, and now I'm not going to tell anyone that I'm right and everybody else is wrong, and that's not what it's about. But I am just want to share my opinion on the freedom of art. And that's what art, I think, should do to you personally, is give you freedom to show the world who you really are. And uh, I'm going to start real simply. Uh, I've been an artist now for right at 40 years. Uh, I got started in it at the age of three. Be of course, one years old and up to three years old, I was like any other child. Crayons, pencils, whatever I can get my hands on. But at the age of three, my mom had already uh, been uh, dabbling in oil painting for a, a couple years. She was uh, started when I was about one years old, was wanting to do a painting of me as a baby. And so she got into oil painting. So there for two years, I would, you know, be at home at mom and notice her with the brush, painting and sketching things out. So very early on, I was getting exposed to art. And uh, then one day, about three years old, mom was not paying attention. She's probably in the, I think she's in the kitchen doing some cooking. And uh, I found this picture of an Indian. And for whatever reason, I was wearing a pair of shorts and, and I got a ballpoint pen, regular black pen. I think it probably was a paper mate. And I actually turned the Indian, oddly enough, upside down. And I drew it from the feet backwards, upside down, so that the viewer, everyone else, could see it standing right side up. Which is very odd for a child at the age of three. Because normally, at that age, children, want, it's all about their perspective. And for whatever reason, I was that odd child that was, my concern was everyone else's perspective. So, boom, when mom seen that, that put me in the direction. Right? She was on it. Obviously, this kid's got an eye for it. And so, boom, she started pushing me in it. So, by the time I was five years old, uh, she let me do my first oil painting. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a vase with some flowers, dandelions, you know, uh, and stuff like that. And then... Uh, I think by the time I was age seven, eight years old, she she was started taking classes with a guy by the name of David Yarnell. And at the time when he was alive, was in Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, and he taught oil painting, sketching, and watercolor. Well, I got first into the watercolor class. Well, by the time I was old enough to get into his oil painting class, his health was real bad. So, but by this time. My mother started teaching her own classes at the YMCA, and later on in her, our house, we created our own studio. So, from my middle school years up all the way through my high school years, I was underneath my mom every week, every weekend. Me and my mother, we, we was painting and uh, watched, gosh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of Bob Ross and stuff like Bob Ross. If you don't know who he is, a fabulous landscape painter and stuff like that. So, that's how I got my foundation in art was being under her and studying landscape art. But on the side that my mom didn't teach me, I was doing Johnny Quest artwork from comic books and stuff like that. And of course, uh, what really got me into the pen and ink artwork was Conan the Barbarian. And this is the kind of stuff that my mother was not interested in, but it fascinated me as a child. So. And so I was kind of learning both worlds there, oil painting, landscaping, and doing this kind of art. But the last thing I remember doing my mother, and I still have it today, was in 1990. The last painting we done together was of a hummingbird, I think on a big yellow flower. I don't even know what kind of flower it was. But it was, you know, at that time, I had enough of that kind of art. It was just not exciting me. It wasn't driving me. I wanted more of the fantasy art super more fantasy art than superhero i was a huge star war fan but i never did do a lot of star war art. the fantasy history stuff like johnny quest and the period stuff like the conan from the renaissance era that was my passion in art and then i was uh problem was by the time 1990 rolled around life got in the way and made some bad choices went down some wrong paths 
Uh, ended up getting into professional wrestling at that time. And so I was concentrating more on the wrestling than the art. So my art, straight down the tube. So, but every once in a while, about three months out of the year, I'd hit it real strong and real hard again. So, but the problem with doing that, and I've done this for like over a decade, decade and a half, is when you only dabble in art three to five months a year, you don't grow. You that first half of that three to five months, you're just getting back up to your dust. So no more than I would kind of get back into my hot spot, I would stop. So what I want to discuss here in this uh, piece that we're doing here is about training. You've got to train. You have to study art. You need to learn what is good art and what is bad art. And there is a huge difference. And I can't tell you... When I grew up as a kid, we grew up with great art. The G.I. Joe cartoons, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Thundar the Bar Barbarian. You know, kids nowadays, it's this bubble, Powerpuff Girls, Spongebob, this crappy art that these kids are just getting lost in space over. And right off the bat, they're learning bad art. And they're thinking that's fine. And, and, and it's, really, it's really starting to show at a lot of conventions nowadays and stuff, this bad art is just going everywhere. There's this, it's all, click the button on the computer, voila, I'm an artist. And it's just, I'm telling you, if you want to get into art, you got to get into, like this Tarzan piece I just done a few weeks ago, raw squ uh, sketch here with a colored pencil, come back with a paintbrush and doing the ink work. Classic art, which enthused me from all the way back as a child, when I was like 12 years old, Conan style. Prince Valiant was another one of those. So it's still, what I learned as a kid, influencing major today. And another thing we're going to get into is how uh, I got into sculpting. Sculpting really helped me twist my brain and push my sketching art, my inking and stuff like that. Because when you get into doing a piece like this, when I figured out I could sculpt, wow. The, what, how it works your brain is, see this right here, you have to think 3D, above it, underneath it. There are so many, the, three, the 2D art has no comparison to this type of art. There's so many different, and, and the, the feeling of it, the texture, the weight, and, it, and that's, and you, you learn so much about anatomy, bone structure, muscle sculpts, sculpture, and, and all that. So once you start, uh, it makes you study all these things that are inside of your artwork, which this kind of art, that's what, you don't know how to put the pec muscles on there if you don't know where the rib cage is, and if you don't know how the muscles flow, you wouldn't know how to put the skin on it, or put a cape on it, or anything else like that. So this right here magnified my skills on what's underneath the drawing. And once that done this, my artwork gained. So. Learn other mediums. Don't think I'm just going to learn sketch art and nothing else. You got to get into sculpting. You got to get into painting. I even dabble with airbrush. I mean, and now I'm getting into learning another form of uh, sculpting. Now I, it's more of a carving technique, which is I, I sculpt in wax. And I just started this, gosh, barely like six months ago. And this is your building with clay and moving around this, you're putting it on and scratching it off. Kind of the reverse of this, but the 85% of the principles still apply. So, but great, I mean, sculpting, if you're having trouble with your sketching, get into sculpting. It'll help you a lot. And then the next step you got to do is get over the fear of doing bad art. If you're afraid to do anything, well, before you even start, you're defeated. You're going to do bad enjoy making art. Get in here, have fun with it, and if it don't turn out right, don't cry about it. Don't, oh my gosh, I need to give up and quit because I'm not Frank Frazetta today. Well, guess what? Ten years from now, you're probably not going to be a Frank Frazetta, but if you quit now, you'll never find out if you can be someone like him. So you got to get over the fear. If you do something bad, realize it's bad, then learn something from that. Get, that's how you become a good artist. You learn from your mistakes. Don't mean you got to go out here and show everybody how horrible you did. Do six or seven bad ones. Hide them from everybody. But make sure your seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth ones are showing growth. 
I usually have a type of art that once a month I come back and do the same kind of drawing just to see if I'm getting a little bit better. So, and then, once you get comfortable who you are as an artist and you feel like you're getting somewhere, break the rules. Try something different. When I do paintings, it's mostly an oil painting, but you, I might put acrylic paint on there. I may put spray paint on there. Learn the rules, but then try to figure out what rules you can break. Experiment. If, if, if you're painting and you get a hunch, I need to put spray paint right here. Stop, grab the spray paint, put it on there. Don't second guess yourself. If your gut feeling as an artist tells you to do something, do it. If you screw it up, go back to the drawing board, start all over it, and don't do that next time. Do something else. But keep trying something until you feel like, yes, that worked for me. And don't worry about, well, well, they said not to use true black on a painting, or they say if you're drawing, you can't use a mechanical lead pencil. If you don't like using a number two pencil, don't use a number two pencil. But I do strongly suggest do it anyway. Play with it. Goof around with it. But don't think that you can only do one thing and you're not allowed to do something. Try it all. See what works for you. Have fun. Be passionate. Be fired up. Find excuses to create. Don't let anyone or anything come in between you and your reasons to pull out of you emotionally onto paper, canvas, clay, wax, whatever. I dare you to reach down deep and challenge yourself. I dare you to break all the rules and prove to everyone that you can be whatever you set a goal that you can be. I'm Kevin Sexton. The impossible is my specialty.